So for those of you uh, not familiar with the garden grounds, let alone uh, gardeners, uh, he's the head, head curator of the garden. He oversees the entire uh, culture as well as the uh, maintenance side of the Japanese garden, just to make sure this stays as authentic as it can be. <laughs> Do you want to say hi to everyone, Sada? Hello. See, I am we for kind of full-blown Japanese gardeners outfit today. <laughs> I just uh, finished the pine trees, pine camping. So, uh, good afternoon. I think this is a beautiful uh, oh my in God. The spring and uh, it's very early. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just uh, almost two, three weeks ahead of normal year. So, um, that keep us really <laughs> busy mm -hmm. right now. Mm -hmm. It has been incredibly warm actually. Right. What a glorious day today. Amazing. Yeah, you have to this just the leaves just came out in the last two days. Just last two days. Just last two days? Yeah. yeah. Oh my god. So this part of the garden is known as flat garden, right? That's correct. Mm. Right. Wow. So the most uh, kind of formal part of the entire garden. Mm -hmm. So this is where we begin our tour today. It's going to last about 10-15 minutes, depending on how our conversation rolls. But bear anyway, with us. Beautiful mm. time of the day. Mm -hmm. It is. Okay. All right. So these are pine trees that you've been working on, right? I mean, you were working on this morning. What we call candle candling. Candling. Right. This uh, this 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 is the one we call candle. Okay. Right. This will grow up, and then these a bunch of uh, needles. Uh huh. Fold it, then start off. Okay. Right. So, so we have to control the growth mm -hmm. by basically pinching this candle shorter. Right. Therefore, the fewer needles. Uh huh. Uh huh. Yeah, we're going to get into a uh, slightly more detail later on uh, <laughs> sure. because I did cover the uh, little footage actually this morning while these guys were working on the uh, pine trees. So, all right. all right then. Thank you. Wow. Gorgeous. Some people actually do, um, some members, some visitors, they actually do make the point of visiting the garden this time of the afternoon, right? That's correct. Actually. Why do you think that is? I think uh, it's a, this is, you know, you can see the contrast of mm -hmm. the light and dark. Mm. So we give uh, the tree such as Japanese maple a great opportunity to really kind of show off. This is just a singly sort of gorgeous and just a short moment, just half an hour. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And this particular time, uh, 3 o'clock, 3.30, is a beautiful time. Excellent. Little tip for you guys, actually, when you guys are, you know, are able to come back to the garden. And this is the time most people actually start leaving the garden. <laughs> <laughs> so you have to stay a little longer. <laughs> Be patient, in other words, okay? <laughs> So I was just complaining to Sada that uh, doing everything by myself, being a camera person and narrator and interviewer, uh, it's, a, it's a pretty hard task by itself actually, but uh, not as hard as coming here every single day doing the maintenance of the entire gardening grounds by just three or four people I believe, right? Right, four. Four, four, four gardeners at the moment, oh my god. So it's been almost one month since we were forced to close the garden to the general public, I guess. What has been, since the closure, the garden closure, what has been taking the most, well, the most amount of time out of your schedule doing the, you know, ground maintenance here? Right, right. Uh, so it's been a month about, it's, a, uh, it's so fast. I think it just a four of us, so um, this is unfortunately the busiest time of the year. Oh my God, okay. <laughs> so, we hit the wrong season uh, <laughs> because when the, the deciduous, for instance, you can see deciduous trees start to moving, mm -hmm. and opening the leaves, mm -hmm. and then the, with this dry and warm weather, mm -hmm. um, so we have to water trees, mm -hmm. plants. Mm -hmm. So watering irrigation system actually went on it's three weeks earlier than normal. Okay, it's well. already running. Wow. And then we do hand water. In the meantime, the, because of the temperatures uh, um, unusually high, mm -hmm. that brings the, the pine 
trees can grow faster okay. or faster. So we are watering and candering and then weeds comes up mm -hmm. all at one time. Oh my god, okay. Right. So this is a t kind of time of the year that uh, these trees, the botanical beings, show the most amounts of growth then. Um, right. But obviously, we've only got four gardeners to work on the <laughs> right. entire ground. Okay. So we have to pick the battle. Uh -huh. So we and each day again, it's depending on the weather. We are adjusting in the morning, seven o'clock. We mm -hmm. uh, convene at seven o'clock and mm -hmm. then basically decide, look at the weather, yeah. forecast, and decide which which areas uh, to water mm -hmm. and which area to skip. Mm -hmm. and for the sake of doing other things yeah so yeah. it's a really uh, we have a general ideas for the this uh, this month and next month but uh, we are uh, adjusting every day pretty, mm -hmm. pretty much but it's a great learning I mean real learning for me mm -hmm. because uh, I haven't done the maintenance of this garden with such a few hours oh, all right okay <laughs> right. wow <laughs> so it's a good learning real hands-on experience right, <laughs> right. in its right. truest sense I guess right. But you know, hearing, I mean, I'm not a horticulturalist myself, but uh, I, I just know there are broad categories of, uh, of plants. One is uh, deciduous trees and the other obviously is perennial. But in a typical Japanese garden design, would you be, I guess, um, striking, trying to strike the right balance between what takes the most amount of time for the gardeners? I mean you know the ratio between the decidia trees and perennial trees do you ever consider like maybe planting less of deciduous trees just to <laughs> lessen the amount of work that's required during you know the right. high kind of growth season right 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 well it's hard to tell it's again depending on the beholders sort of eyes uh -huh. so someone see maintenance being this much mm -hmm. others see maintenance being this much mm -hmm. so um, so in general the uh, evergreen trees uh, grow slow mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. and the deciduous for that reason they renew themselves every year so right they, their growth is much uh, higher uh, but the, they take a break whereas a uh, Evergreen sort of it just keep growing. So um, in general, yes, because of the growth, this is just takes a little more uh -huh, uh -huh. Um, than the evergreen. And also, you can see this the contrast. This is beautiful. This is backdrop is this is just in the you know against the evening sun. Mm -hmm. So evergreen cannot provide this right okay so when you are we uh, trying to get the garden that unchanged stay uh -huh. while you are looking uh -huh. then probably evergreen is a good choice <laughs> right but uh, when you want to enjoy the seasonal mm -hmm. changes mm -hmm. then you have a sort of choice of deciduous trees mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. so it Depending on the makeup of the, the, the plant materials in the garden, mm. that's we really set the tone of the, what garden feels like. Okay, right. okay. Of course, so, uh, the, the other factor probably would be climate right. of the region, right? Mm. Right, right. So we have it here in the Pacific Northwest, uh, you know, long rain, dark seasons. Uh -huh. So, um, and the, again, so this is just this time of the year is in especially beautiful um, and the people are waiting for this moment mm -hmm. each year. Mm -hmm. right? mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm one of them for right. sure. This certainly is one of my favorite spots actually. Feeling very blessed and very honored to be, you know, walking at this garden. Every time I walk across this um, moon bridge, So quiet. I hope they can hear the sounds of water. Mm. Now you Sada were very much involved in the ground design, um, you know, the blueprinting of the new expansion that we can see from here from the right, moon bridge. Right. We can just see the second floor uh, rooftop actually of the new building, which is almost kind of nestled in the surrounding environment because of its color and everything. The 
uh, the green roof, brown, brown roof. But how intentional was it, um, the way you can see the rooftop from where we are standing currently? Right, I think almost like uh, the height of the building uh, very much influenced by the view from this bridge. All basically. right, yeah. okay. Again, this is a really quintessential uh, the, and the historical sort of uh, location mm -hmm. and people enjoy mm -hmm. the view from the moon bridge. Yeah. Yeah. So when you are looking back towards the new, ex you know, the, the landscape areas, mm -hmm. just make sure the building is not too visible. Okay. That's the second roof is uh, green roof. Uh -huh. and so basically there is a foreground and the garden uh -huh. and then middle ground being the roof yeah. green yeah. and then background being the Douglas Park mm -hmm. So we did actually measure um, uh, from this location to the height of the building and make sure uh, we don't see something on site. Okay. Right. okay, so everything is pretty intentional then. I mean, that thing yeah. was sort of uncalculated. Brilliant. Okay. Yeah, especially from this spe this spe specific spot. Okay. Right. Yeah. Oh yes. This is another favorite spot of mine actually, um, where the Japanese irises actually grow. They flourish uh, during the month of June, typically, I think. Uh, but they almost are kind of in, well, getting in bloom these days. So is this part of the fast growth that you are talking yeah, about? Yeah, this is again uh, two, two weeks or maybe much earlier than the normal. Wow. I'm glad we, we just finished the weeding of uh -huh. this iris bed. Mm -hmm. Once they are here this much, there's no way we go inside mm -hmm. to do the weeding. Right? So I I, see. I'm glad I did the weeding about <laughs> 10 days ago. <laughs> Thanks to your foresight. <laughs> because uh, when you're weeding on this bed, basically your knees are down mm -hmm. and you're, you know, basically crawling around and weeding. Okay. the coils they're thriving oh my god <laughs> they seem to recognize you Sada <laughs> <laughs> these guys are hungry <laughs> oh my god they're they certainly are congregating hey social distancing please feeding now they just uh, this is the second week they are uh, they become some active mm. active meaning then we have to feed so we're feeding them every other day right now then mm -hmm. very soon will be every day wow right. they're just uh, waking up they're waking up from hibernation really We have the, I guess, all time favorite of most vistas, I guess, the waterfall. Now, I think uh, um, the Tourism Bureau, uh, Visit Oregon, mm -hmm. just designated okay. this particular scenery. Uh, for the um, um, like a wallpaper ah. for Zoom, <laughs> right? Yeah, I'm representing the city of Portland area. Ah, so you get the exact same footage. I think lasting about 45 min, uh, 45 seconds. Exact same footage that you can download from uh, Visit Oregon. Is it Visit Oregon? Uh, travel, travel, travel Oregon. Oregon. Yeah. Sorry, my bad. Travel Oregon. So coming back to what we actually started, 
and we could have we could have just walked for at least a couple of more hours actually uh, <laughs> with this weather so beautiful but um yeah Sada needs to go into another meeting so um do you have any final thoughts comments for our viewers for our members all eagerly waiting for our reopen i think it we um by the way this uh i started this beer i didn't shave since the, <laughs> the garden actually closes so i'm kind of keeping this only to shave the day everyone come back so i'm waiting it's a with a little bit of face <laughs> <laughs> but i think uh, uh while uh, most of you are at home uh, we i hope you have a you know moment of joy with uh this garden in this particular day is uh, and the time it there's only one moment mm. the same moment so mm. I, I hope you enjoy it and then we are ready anytime for you to come back mm. so we are here to maintain the garden uh, to make sure when you're back the garden welcomes you in the best shape thank you excellent thank you so much so thank you everyone for um, taking the time to participate in the virtual stroll around the garden with Sutton and I. Together with the glorious light that you saw all across the garden grounds just as much as we did. Um, if you liked it, you know, we'll appreciate it if you could give us a virtual thumbs up to let us know that you'd like to see uh, more of those footage uh, from the garden. and have more opportunity to hear from us who are doing all that's needed to keep this garden, to keep this treasure alive and going uh, through these really difficult times. I've said this um, time and time again and I can never ever emphasize enough just how blessed and fortunate I feel uh, to be part of this community and serve our members and visitors through our programs to highlight the relationships between nature and, nature and culture. I just hope that we'll see the end of this dark and long tunnel as soon as possible so that garden gets to see you, the garden gets to welcome you back, and the garden gets to offer you um, the much needed sense and touch of serenity and relaxation, not virtually, but in person. Um, as Sada said, we are very much looking forward to welcoming you, all of you, back at the garden when the dust settles. And please know that we are wishing every one of you well and the safest days ahead. So see you back at the garden when we reopen and take care. Thank you so much.